If you shoot documentaries like me and you happen to do it yourself, well, this is the shot. This is the shot that a lot of people look for is just a nice big wide so that you can see a bit of the context of what's happening behind the subject, but you're also getting just a big, beautiful, soft source from something like a window light. Problem being that a setup like this also brings in a lot of contrast if you don't have something to just help lift up that contrast ratio. So book lights are the best way of doing that. And for the longest time, I've been building book lights with four C stands little to no time and I'm stressing to get it all set up in time for the subject to come in. A lot of times working with athletes, they're coming in early and I don't have the time to prepare. So I just saw this YouTube video the other morning uh, by a guy named P.D. Mokri or Mokri. Uh, he's down in Texas and he has the most ingenious solution. Build a book light with one C stand, like just one C stand that takes under 10 minutes to build. He was pretty casual and nonchalant about it, but when it when I saw it, it kind of blew my mind. So I feel like everyone who shoots on their own should know about this setup because it changed my life in a small way. So today we're gonna build that setup. And uh, and again, go follow PD Mokri. He's got some other great uh, gaffer tips and tricks, some grip and lighting, and uh, and this one just, just hit me in the feels. So we're gonna build it. So here's what you're going to need to build the one C-stand book light. A C-stand, that goes without saying, some spring clamps, a standard knuckle or grip head, a light strong enough to bounce through your book light, your preferred diffusion, six inch cartolini, some kind of crossbar, stingers, sandbags, safety first, and a four foot ultra bounce or floppy fabric of your choice. Uh, okay, so we've got our camera setup in position. We've got kind of that classic Netflix wide angle in a warehouse like you're interviewing an FBI agent or something. Uh, so the light's okay right now, but it is super contrasty on one side. You're gonna get crazy shadows. I'm sure, I don't know, how am I looking right now? Pretty contrasty and dark. Yeah, so that's a bit of an issue. So the best way to solve that is the book light. So this is kind of a, I don't know, one of the most ingenious things I've ever seen because it takes up way less space, way less gear, and way less time. So we're gonna start with the sandbag because safety is important. So we'll throw the sandbag over your biggest leg in the front, always not only for safety, but you actually really need it for the setup as well. You're also gonna see that I thought ahead and put some gaff tape on that front leg because we're using a Cardellini here. Uh, this one is a one foot Cardellini. Um, just kind of gets your light a little further out over that leg. Takes a minute. Uh, this Carlini is actually really cool too because we've got a channel here which stops the, the quacker bill from swiveling around, uh, but it is really sharp, so watch your hands. So we're gonna go ahead, lock this down on the front leg, and this is obviously gonna be your post for the light that we'll be using, which is the 300D, because it's a bit of an overcast day, and we don't need quite the output of a 600, so make sure that's locked in nice and tight, and we'll get the light going next. All right. The light can get popped on right here. Nice thing with it being this low, too, is that you can actually shine it straight up into the floppy, which kind of gives you a bit more wrap because it's hitting kind of the curve point once we get it set up. All right. We'll get the hyper reflector on just to control a little bit of that extra spill. I really struggle to get this on when it's at this angle. There we go. Okay. So I've kind of found after setting this up a couple times, I like getting all the stuff built on the bottom first so it gives a lot of weight on the base because we are kind of also adding a lot of flex on the top of the C-stand. So getting the weight center of gravity down lower is probably better and safer. I'm just kind of roughing all this in right now because obviously we'll have to readjust once everything's actually built out. Okay, that's good. Knuckle. 
Zach, do you think I put the knuckle on the right way this time? Only one way to find out. Let's find, let's find out. So I didn't actually, don't own a bleached muslin floppy, but I did go to our friends over at Picture Perfect Package, and they were actually able to set me up really quickly last minute when I had the idea for this video yesterday. But I really wanna buy one now, so that Jesse and Zach can steal it as soon as I set it up. Or is that not true, Zach? All right, so we got our bounce set up here, just about. Again, I'm not eight feet tall, so I'm gonna just bring this down a bit. Plus, we want a bit more of a bend in the floppy so that we can kind of wrap the light a little bit better. All right. So that's nice and tight. Now this is really cool because the crossbar I happen to have a Westcott scrim gym already. You can probably use a crossbar for like a backdrop stand as well, but make sure it's fairly light because it's still adding a lot more torque on the, on the floppy. But so far in the four or five times I've built this now trying to make this video, it's not been an issue. But it also has, it holds itself up really. The only extra tip that I gave is maybe don't use cheap plastic clamps. There's much better ones out there. How's that looking? It's holding, that's good. Again, if you have a scrim gym, setup of your diffusion is gonna be super easy. You're just gonna Velcro it. I'm a professional. All right, let's get it sparkied up. Parking. Yeah, I think somewhere like right there. I'm actually looking on the inside of this. I don't know if you've seen this, but the inside of this floppy looks like someone like just threw their coffee at it. It's like they were pissed off, walked off set, and they're like, I'm done. And it's just got brownie yellow stains. I would like to think it's coffee. Okay, so I mean, even with filming this, I got this done pretty quickly, but if I was just trying to hurry and set it up, this takes under 10 minutes to build by yourself. It takes up a lot less room and a lot less equipment to actually get a book light built up, which is kind of nice when you're doing this by yourself. I was able to get framing, everything done in about, let's say 20 minutes tops. So that's your book light in a C stand. I think it looks pretty good. I haven't looked, but I'm sure it does. Let's. Uh, How, how, how am I looking on that tiny, terrible monitor? I'm telling you about the drug cartels that I busted in 20, 2003. It was a hard time. And that's it. That is your one C-stand book light. It is such a simple little setup that gives you a nice big source. So if you're fighting windows like this, you just need a light and floppy, diffusion, one C-stand. It's amazing. Mokri, thank you for that idea. Uh, go subscribe to his channel. If you liked this video, comment down below. Like it if you so please, and we'll see you next week. Fourth video this year, not bad, not bad.